Aloha, I wanted to do another quick video in reference to the last video I did that was talking about the truth, true and real news, or um, real and fake agenda, and uh, the commercial revolution, and the design of the entertainment industry, and so on and so forth, and how I used examples of Veritasium talking about the truth is being the truth is being attacked or something like that putting themselves out to be the truth truth um, the, the the originators of truth the creators of truth uh, and same thing went for the Alex Jones um, anchor or whatever that guy is on that show and it's so much, it's not so, like I said, it's not so much about what they're saying, it's how they're saying what they're saying and who's saying it. This is another example that just came out two days ago, three days ago. Today's the 22nd or 23rd. Um, this came out on the 20th and it's entitled, Hey Bill Nye, it's on Big Think. Hey Bill Nye, if scientific discoveries are dangerous, should they be censored? Now, my main reason why, so I think I'm going to name this video censorship and s s censoring and sedatives or something like that. Um, but for the censoring point, I wanted to get on to, because they're the same thing, how I was relating from the last video. Before I get there, big think, just imagine how many questions get asked of Bill Nye get sent to them they choose this style there is no coincidence in Veritasium coming out with that video about so-called truth and Bill Nye probably around the same day coming out with this video talking about censorship now I'm gonna play it and go through it before I go through that, I just wanted to share uh, a response um, to an email that I had that was asking me about um, cannabis usage. And actually last night, I was thinking about how cannabis is actually being used and can be and is being used when you zoom out far enough. It's being used as a sedative. Uh, as mind as as uh, mind expanding as that medicine is, as that natural plant is, it also has side effects in relation to how it how it affects all of all of our interactions, all of our experience. Uh, I personally, and what I shared in the email, I personally, I naturally started to have less of a desire to smoke cannabis and just engage in those circles pretty much, even though they were my family and friends. And, and on a personal side, like my body really didn't, it wasn't needing it anymore. In fact, it, it was just like, it became something different than it was six months or a year before that when I was more consumed by the communal interaction with smoking cannabis. I started to lose the desire naturally, especially when I saw that it was affecting my dreams. And this individual emailed me, shared that um, his dreams are also affected by smoking cannabis. And some of my friends and family were saying the same thing. And as much information that I get on a daily basis from dreams um, and the potential that I feel and felt at that time in experiencing the dream realm, I it was just a no-brainer. It was like, do you want to keep smoking or do you want to engage in a deeper layer levels of dreams? So it was it was a no-brainer. Uh, and not to mention the fact that it was just, um, well, I'll get into that and later when it comes back because I kind of lost my train of thought there. But what I wanted to add to that is that 
when I was making videos at the time, because I was actually, I actually stopped during the process of um, making videos here on YouTube, and then I um, started to engage in my dreams a lot more, and then um, I had a death in the family, and everybody was smoking even more, more so, and I engaged, I started smoking again at that time frame and then I stopped completely because it was just a proof my body was kind of like basically like rejecting it almost so it was natural for me so that's what I would recommend to anybody who's even thinking about like uh, their cannabis usage at all it, it has to be natural and this is with everything you can't force yourself to stop doing anything it has to be naturally naturally um, um, removed in some kind of way it has to be a natural process so if you force yourself in any kind of way to do anything like that i mean it might work but that's the exception to the rule and it's also uh kind of abrupt and it can throw things out of whack there are side effects to forcing yourself to do stuff like that and you, you actually from my experience you learn more about yourself when you kind of just observe more of what's really going on here like in reference to me stopping I had to understand why I wanted to stop I had to understand more about the plant I had to understand more about myself and why I was using it why other people use it and um, observe interactions between people when they use it and when they don't use it and then see like all kinds of, there was so many there was so much information involved in that and then I expanded out because of my video making stuff I, I was expanding it that perspective out to the collective usage from a national scale or whatever however you want a collective scale however you want to see it I was seeing it as the legalization or the commercialization of cannabis is actually being utilized. It's 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 being it's a soft opening, like I mentioned in previous videos. It's a soft opening. They're playing um, the so-called they, the powers that be, that need to maintain a particular level of consciousness. Like smoking cannabis is, they say, gets you high. So that's like when you go into it, you can see it as like an elevation in consciousness. For that moment but really it's not really changing anything about you it's just allowing you to access more of yourself and be more present in the moment and be more sensitive and uh, empathic in in that relationship to everything that's a part of your experience so that's already existing in who and what you are um, so once I started to realize that and then started to expand that for it was easier to re release that from the personal space then to expand that to the collective scale I started to feel that and from my personal observation you're not really getting high and actually you have a, a higher potential when you are of a clear system and my personal experience with this is when I was making videos and I actually started off making videos where I was smoking sometimes, not all the time, but I would get like this, this <laughs> at that time, this is a great idea for a video and then start talking about it and I would be high and it would sound all right. But when I would re-listen to it, something fell off to me and it wasn't like the information was off. It was just me personally. I felt like something was off, like I could do better. So I started to feel and sense that trend that my maximum flow and focus was actually available when I wasn't smoking. And the only thing I had to really do was up raise my vibration without smoking to hit that particular stream of consciousness that didn't need a Kickstarter like cannabis. So that's what I started to do. And um, it worked. It was, I mean, it's not like it worked. It was just like a, that, that observation worked. So it was just me just like experiencing or allowing myself to experience a higher state of consciousness without needing to 
um, have something else involved there. So, and I, I naturally started to lo uh, I started to be uncomfortable with speaking about the topics or anything that I was speaking about when I was so-called high, because not not so much that um, it, it just kind of there was kind of an imbalance there. I just felt imbalanced, and I feel more balanced, more aware, more focused when I don't smoke. So in that reality, in that space, um, I wanted to make the videos from the highest perspective that I could and the more focused um, perspectives that I could and it only needed me to uh, lock in to a natural stream of consciousness that is so-called on that high level and then challenge myself to maintain that space and then after a while it just becomes natural. Uh, so, but it's not a one thing. It's it's a life thing. Like it's an, an entire experience thing. So it's not like, see, cannabis kind of raises your vibration or allows you to access that space. Like the endocannabinoid system is like NOS, like in a, <laughs> like in a Fast and a Fur Furious car. Like you can access, like you can hit that speed, but it's only in spurts. And those spurts can be relative towards like the, the duration of time when you're high. But you can actually travel on that space in and out like a like you meditate. Like when you go into meditation, you you can go into a higher state of consciousness. Or when you're having a dream, or when you're in like a lucid dream, you can access higher states of consciousness depending on like your depths of awareness and your engagement. So it's not something that you necessarily need. It's a tool. But when that tool becomes more of your experience than you yourself, that's when things can get out of balance. And that's how I'm seeing the, the utilization of the commercialization of cannabis as a sedative, as what's going on today on, on the collective scale. Uh, and why, so before, before now, they could control individuals with fear, with dominance back when they made it illegal and like the prohibition time frame and all that other stuff when they made alcohol and cannabis illegal and then made alcohol legal and cannabis criminalized and so on and so forth they could just tell you and just punk you pretty much just bully you and bully you and be like you know this is legal and this is illegal shut the hell up and then just go with it but now people are more the the consciousness of the people is expanding so they need to adjust to expand the chains to be able to control people so now they just this is where the bombardment of social media and um, the internet in news and alternative news and all these distractions and all this stuff is to bombard your consciousness with distraction because our consciousness is expanding so Another form of that is to turn the medicine of, and the spiritual properties of something like cannabis and your relationship to nature into a prescription drug, into a sedative, into a pop culture toy, into a pop culture uh, communal drug. It just takes the magic. It takes the essence out of what the the natural experience is. Now, now it, it inherently doesn't take that away from you engaging in that experience because when you smoke or so-called get high, you still go to that space. But it's a matter of who's going to that space, like the level of consciousness going to that space. So back when I was, if I were to smoke, to have smoking, smoked, uh, cannabis when I was in the army then I would get high but I would only be experiencing that high in ref in reference to like me like looking like the person that I was back then it's different than the person that I am now relative to consciousness so like that's probably why I didn't smoke at all up until very recently within the recent years actually um 
and then it was only for a short amount of time but yeah because i i wanted if i was going to get high i wanted to be in 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 a good place uh on every level psychologically spiritually and so on and so forth or at least open to understanding what that world is the majority of people today are not even open to open to what that world is the majority of people today are utilizing this as like a, a pop culture drug in a in a sense a, a prescription drug like it's a it's becoming a fad it's becoming and it's becoming some kind of commercial thing and that's good for the system itself because now it has control over you rather than you utilizing it for either its medicinal properties or the experience itself or raising your consciousness now it's something rather than uh, it's something external like that's doing something to you rather than you realizing that it's you that's having this experience it's you that's high it's you that is that has this capability to engage in this reality outside of the um, you know the the regular mainstream world and all that other garbage so it kind of takes away and as long as it keep they keep playing like with this it's legal in the state but it's illegal in the federal side it just makes this power scheme more powerful uh and stuff like these videos like hey bill nye like should they be censored scientific discoveries be censored and it, it just makes stuff like that more like it, it gives more power away to the system and takes the power away from you so when people are so distracted like i gave the example of me like eight years ago or something uh, yeah eight years ago um i was distracted by like the American dream or the world or when I was in the army, I was distracted by my ego or distracted by the, the material realm and so on and so forth. So when you smoke from that foundation, you don't really have like a solid found a solid foundation to actually get high. You, you, you're going to get high to some extent, but it'll be high in some kind of... Um, like Chuck E. Cheese or something like that <laughs> when you have the ability to get high in reference to like Mount Everest or um, the stars or the sun or the moon or something like that that's basically how I see what's going on with the commercial version of cannabis and how it's being uh, manipulated on the mainstream and this this culture this so-called conscious culture it it also gets people like once you once you get high on a particular topic uh, and you hold on to that thread it's kind of difficult to get out of that thread because you can continue to just add everything because when you get into that high space you just want to connect everything so like somebody can get high in reference to like a, a, a a so-called conspiracy theory or something like that and it could be or like one of these these storylines like the nibiru stuff and all these other stories out here that are or the new age like getting high within the new age mentality and always talking about like aliens and and um like the the extraterrestrials coming to save us and and um you know just it you get high and it feels good so this is this is in reference to like how um cannabis engages in the new age community and what it does it does the same thing see the new age mentality is another form of getting high the um the the christian mentality reconnecting with you know jesus and the bible and that whole that's another version of getting high nothing wrong with all that stuff what i'm excuse me what I'm saying is that it's another form. It's another linear thought process in, in, instead of being focused on a clear space, a clear and open space and open to uh, everlasting expansion, constantly learning and adding to uh, everything that, that you are aware of without picking a particular 
linear focus and then just adding to that. So like cannabis, like for me, like I actually started smoking when I was in like that that new age information uh, phase where I was like researching a lot of information that was in relation to the new age. In order to understand something, you have to go into it. So that's where I was naturally guided. I wanted to know about, you know, sacred geometry. I wanted to know about all this alien, Sasquatch, extraterrestrials, Area 51 stuff and secret space program. I wanted to know about all that stuff. So I had to understand channeling, all that stuff. I needed to know what all that information was. So I went into it, research it, and I never adopted any of those sort of mentalities as like a religion or anything, which some people actually do. They turn like the connection with the star systems and extraterrestrials, they turn it into another another like religion, like Christianity. And the aliens are just like a, another like savior, like Jesus. So you, instead of your Jesus savior, now you have a uh, a serious savior, savior, or Orion, or um, Andromedan aliens, or Nibiru savior, whatever the savior mentality is, it does the same thing. It has the same effect on people. So I was v very aware of that whole world because of how I was raised. Like I was raised to always be aware of my surroundings, um, being that I grew up in in Oakland and in like. You're just, you have a different aspect on, and I was also kind of like on my own by myself, even growing up as a kid, being a mixed kid. I was never Mexican enough for the Mexican crew, and I was never uh, uh, so-called black enough for the for the black crew or whatever, the, the, you know, that whole circle. Being you're always kind of on your outside, kind of on your own. And I didn't mind that because I always interacted with all those circles anyway. So I was cool with everybody. But I never really adopted or, or, or uh, um, subscribed to any one kind of uh, circle or group or anything like that because that's just not who I am. So it actually benefited me in the future when I was in, uh, engaged in kind of like the new age and new age community and then... Um, approached by like religious focuses and all kinds of other things i was like let me just get this information let me just understand what what's coming what this is coming from what are its limitations and what are what uh what are what are its like um benefits and so on and so forth and if it's naturally cool then cool but so none of that stuff really stuck but i did get all the information and the observations of being within that experience so the same thing happens with cannabis. Cannabis is now being sort of uh, worshipped in a sense. Uh, when you really think about it, you can <laughs> people are um, you say anything about you know smoking weed and people people defend it like do they defend Beyonce or Jesus or <laughs> like whatever like it's it's a whole it's a whole thing is what I'm saying. It's a thing. That kind of, that can overtake a lot of people a lot of the times because, like I said, it, it does engage in your communal sort of um, relationships. You a lot of people who smoke, you it becomes like who you are. Like some people, um, who it, it's no different than like drinking coffee in the morning or smoking cigarettes. It becomes a part of who you are. Like people wake up in the morning, oh, don't talk to me. I'm not. I didn't have my cup of coffee yet. Like, they aren't who they are unless they have a cup of coffee. Uh, some people aren't who they are until they smoke a cigarette. Some people aren't who they are until they smoke a blunt. Some people aren't who they are, like, until they come home and download and then take a, take a bong hit or whatever. I'm not saying that it's a bad thing. What I'm saying is that it has a tendency to take, to take the focus out of the internal space of who and what you already are and... And have that focus switch and modified to something that's outside of you. And from my personal experience, like I said, and even making these videos, there's a more clarity of thought and a focus that I have and a, a, feel, a sense of highness that I feel when I, I don't smoke and then in reference to when I do. Now, say, having said that, if I were to... You know, take a couple of bong rips, you know, with some friends. 
I do get into this. We start talking about all kinds of stuff, and it gets me into this sort of higher space. But like I said before, I, I'm kind of I feel good. Like I can handle it. It's cool. I like it. Uh, it's not overwhelming. But in reference to um, like my normal, regular kind of chill mode or my normal vibration, then um, it's it's something different. And that difference is just it's just a matter of an opinion. Actually, it's just really just up to you. Uh, but for me personally, I share like it. It's there's something else. Like I can talk and speak and be like high in that moment and get on some crazy like um, cool sort of perspectives. But there's something else there being in that vibration that I haven't. I can't really explain completely now. I guess in this whole video, it kind of explains it. But there's something else there that it's. Um, it's different, not necessarily bad, it's just different. And I, I feel that there's more, there's more that we can, there's, there's a closeness that happens more when, like in a relationship, when I was smoking, when I was with my girlfriend, then it's cool, you know, like we, we have like, like cool, like this, your senses are higher in some kind of way and all that, all that other stuff that comes along with smoking smoking weed but something gets lost in that space there's something there that in, in, in reference to having a deep connection with your loved one when you're not you know having to needing something else in between that like not not needing a, a jump start or something like that like some relationships are completely based upon smoking weed like you can't even have like a positive uh comfortable conversation or anything until you smoke like that's where something is wrong something is something is off there from my in my opinion because it it becomes like another escape mechanism and if you're constantly escaping from something then you're not really working on yourself so it's not really a medicine anymore it's become some kind of tool to escape and like I said, there's nothing wrong with that. But when it becomes like when you don't look at it like that anymore, or don't see, recognize that that's what's happening, then that's when it becomes an issue. And I and the so-called powers that be know this. This is why it's being commercialized. This is why it's such a pop culture thing. You got Snoop Dogg. It's a popular thing because of, like I said, there's a positive side and a negative side to everything. So if you're constantly only focusing on the positive side of smoking cannabis because, uh, largely because it's illegal, it's criminal, it's new, you're, you're getting high. So it's like a, it's like, it's a, it, it's a thing that is kind of taboo it's kind of like it, it's not bad in any kind of way really it's a natural thing it takes you to these higher spaces so like it's but, but what are the what are the 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 other sides to that though in reference to the individual and the collective like i said before there's something more to having a relationship with your partner there's a deeper connection that you can have like when you can look into your woman's eyes and then and then and then be in that space without there's a depth there that is beyond anything else uh, that can be uh, experienced when you're smoking cannabis because you're not completely there like you're there but and you're there in many other ways but there's something else that's missing because there's something in engaged in there like your your focus and everything is not as clear or for lack of a better word pure as can be there's something there's something beautiful in that pure experience and there's something and there's no there's no um limitations in that experience that's less largely why i don't engage in it anymore uh, especially like on a regular basis i haven't smoked in i don't have really in a, a desire for it um, there's something more there with just being who and what you are, being high without being 
having to get high. So uh, I'm still exploring the sort of downsides to from the collective perspective of what um, cannabis does uh, because it's relevant. Uh, and one obvious one is that it's a sedative. It becomes a sedative when it becomes a commercial pop culture thing, which it already is. It's already been planted to be that way. And it's only getting expanded from that perspective even more so with all of these styles of cannabis. You got all these like... Um, um, these different ways to smoke it, these different ways to like turn it into whatever it is. And then on top of that, you have actual corporations like becoming engaged in the, the um, distribution of it and all this whole thing. It's just going to lose a lot of its uh, natural flavoring, I guess. And, and how I'm seeing it, it already has in reference to the way it's utilized. I sound like an old man, like, oh, you're old, some old fogey or something like that. But I, this is just my perspective on it. And I, this is just how I see it. I guess this video kind of <laughs> more focused on that. But it's, it's part of the intention of this video, which I wanted to talk about, which is censorship and, and, and the sedative. Because having... A sedative experience or sedating your consciousness is another form of censorship. Like not being privy to information, not being avail not being allowed to think past the globe model, not being allowed to challenge the scientism community, not being allowed to challenge the education system, not being allowed to challenge the politics and politicians and so forth. That's another form of censorship. You're censoring consciousness. Consciousness is being censored and sedated. So when we get to that, to that point, which we already gotten to, then it's just a matter of how you are being censored and how you are being sedated. And how we are being sedated is obvious. You got this you got these genetically modified foods. You got bacon commercials every five seconds. You got the meat eating industry. Everything is weigh weighing you down constantly. That's not so much about your body. It's about your brain. Your brain is being bombarded by fats, by like this, this genetically modified, just kind of blob of shit like people are just not even able to experience their reality at all because they're just so tired all the time i'm i'm speaking from my own experience when i used to eat mcdonald's and jack in a box every day like three and sometimes even four times a day and i could do that because i was in the military at the time and i was working my ass off and running and doing all kinds of working out like crazy so I, I could drive and I didn't have time to do anything really so I could drive to Jack in the Box and get like a steak burrito breakfast burrito in the morning and then burn that off and then go to lunch and get some McDonald's or some bullshit and then get off work and then do that go go have dinner at I don't know some wherever McDonald's again because it was right by the house and then <laughs> and then go out go out and dance and and do that whole nightlife scene and then get the munchies and go to Jack in the Box at night because it's open 24 hours and get like some tacos and some chicken chicken sandwiches and some curly fries like four times a day that's horrible I'm surprised I ain't fucking alive right now because that was a regular basis sort of thing but that's because my my world was I, I didn't know what the hell was going on I, I was just like you need food you just they sell food eat food that's it but now that I see like the intention of these commercials, the intention of the government, the intention of the public education system, the intention of the university system, the intention of politics, the intention of the military, 
all of the intentions behind the scenes, behind the commercials, like the small writing of these prescription drugs commercials that come on, like when you read, start reading the small print of life, then things start to lighten up a lot more because you let go of a lot more and things start to become more clear. So there's a loss of clarity in a sense when your life is bombarded by smoking blunts all day. There's a lot, there's a, there, there, you, like from my own experience, I could be engaged if I was smoking blunts every day or smoking whatever, a bong all day, every day. And I was doing that just like eating fast foods. Not too long, but you know, there was a period of time where it was like that. But in that period of time, I could actually do more. I could, I, I had the potential to do more, to think more, to be engaged more, to take care of myself more. But I, I didn't because I was just sedated in a sense. I was happy. And to balance it out, I was thinking more. I was thinking and accessing more of a higher plane of information when I was getting high on a regular basis. So that's that's why I said it's a, it's a it's a catch 22, I guess. Yeah, like a catch 22 like you get there's these positives and but it, and there's also these negatives that come along with those positives when you stay in that linear frame of excuse me, linear frame of thought. So, um Yeah, to expand it and realize that like the university system and the public education system is a sedative. That shit is a sedative. The the when you are conditioned to conformity for 13 years in the public education system and then conditioned to the American dream and the limitations of the scientism religion, the church of scientism in the university system, when you are conditioned by politics to think and act and talk to other people and relate with your family a certain way and so-called vote a certain way, that's a sedative for consciousness. It affects how we experience our reality as a whole. So it's a form of censorship. You, we overall collectively are being censored from our souls. We are being censored from spiritual connections to each other and the most high and nature and so on and so forth. We are being censored from our maximum potential with the sedatives that we consider to be normal. The sedatives of this normalization program that is a reflection or a, a side effect to the conditioning programs that our parents and our parents' parents were a part of, and they just pass it all, up, all down the line, these conditions have added up to separating us from our maximum potentials and separating us from each other. However you want to see it, from, from you having a relationship with yourself, with your family, with your loved ones, with your, with nature, with spirit, with the most high, with, with intellect even. Like even your intellect, like people who think they're so like intelligent because they have 10 degrees in the university system and all that other shit. Like, you have to defend that intellect. That's what all this shit is on like the TYT and Alex Jones and... And um, Michio Kaku, Bill Nye, Neil deGrasse Tyson, all these people, they have to defend the linear programs that they can't let go of because their conditioning won't allow them to. Because who they have become, who they think they are based upon what the conditions made them to be, is being threatened when people say, well, your university system is full of shit. First of all, NASA is full of shit. Politics is full of shit. The mainstream is full of shit. So when you say that, and you actually back it up with information, with proof, and stuff that challenges their 
way of life, you're actually challenging the individual. Like they accept that they, they receive that energy as challenging the individual. And people aren't going to stand for that. They're like, oh, how dare you talk about Barack Obama? How dare you talk about Neil deGrasse Tyson? He is an astrophysicist god. If he drops the mic and tells you that that's what gravity is, then by golly, you better believe it. Next story. Next distraction. Next Stephen Colbert video. Next Bill Maher discussion. Next TYT news scene. Next Alex Jones uh, breaking news. Next... Donald Trump tweet. Whatever the fuck it is. It's all a distraction. So. That distraction is a censorship. It's also a form of sedative. And. I don't even need to play this video. <laughs> fuck this video. <laughs> it's just. Stupid anyway. If you want to see it. It's four minutes of Bill Nye. Being a fucking asshole talking about fake news is starting to overtake the world because the internet allows it and you have to discern for yourself which is it's true you have to discern for yourself but he's putting himself up as like the administrator of the ultimate truth that's what he's doing there's no room for discussion there's no room for questioning the university system is the scientism community is your God, is the is the Bible. That's it. And that's what that's why they put them they're putting themselves up to be the victim now. It's like we've been giving you truth for centuries, and now when you get the internet, you betray us. You just turn your backs on us. It's like that's what they're doing right now. Because they have no control. And like I said, they got to pick how many videos do you think are sent to Big Think? Are sent to Bill Nye to talk about? And they think it's a coincidence that they choose this video to speak at the same time Veritasium spoke on the same subject. At the same time, the alternative, so-called alternative news and mainstream news is speaking on the same sort of subjects. Like this is on pur purpose to tell... to to promote a particular atmosphere. They're like they're drawing the line in the sand. They're saying either you follow your conditioning that you were placed under in your public education public education system programming and just be on our side and listen to everything that we say and call that truth and real news or you can be a crazy person a lunatic and whatever else they want to label you as just because you don't think like them just because you know at at their essence they're full of shit so that's what these videos are for and they use these bow tie wearing jackasses and these bully solar system vest wearing pieces of shit to get out there and just bully you into believing anything that they say. That's a form of censorship. That's a form of sedating your consciousness. Because you're not even allowed to think outside of the way that they have told you to think. That you think like this. If you don't think like this, then you... It, it's, it's no different than these mind control MK Ultra shit. It's a mind control program. The scientism, university system, politics, your public education system, that is mind control. That is MK Ultra. All the way up to your so-called alternative news, this Alex Jones bullshit, this Bernie Sanders bullshit, this new age mentality of the secret space program and this Nibiru shit and all the other stories that get placed out there for you to believe in is put out there it's the mind control program from you to keep you from actually researching and having a knowingness of researching 
the history. See, th all this stuff exists in distracting you from the present moment and how your future is. The new age, aliens coming to save you in the future. Transhumanism, alien or robotic technology being installed into your body in the future. Flying cars in the future. Christianity, the religious programming, the the revelations, all this stuff is about the future, your savior coming for the future. So they got your future on lockdown. And the only thing they don't really have on lockdown is your history because your ancestors are existing inside and who and what you are right now. And that connection will never be lost. That connection will never be severed. It can be distracted from with your present moment being bombarded by bullshit. It can be distracted from by you focusing on the so-called future that is generated by this artificial intelligence, this synthetic reality. But your connection to your ancestors will never be severed because you are a manifestation of your ancestors sent down from the manifestation of the Most High Spirit. You are a spirit before you are a body. This system, the scientism, scientism system, wants you to focus on the body. And since people are starting to reconnect with their ancestors and realizing the true history, the stories outside of the imbalanced stories, the, the fabricated stories that were sent down by your forefathers and this, this whole uh, Americana sort of mentality and even beyond that, even when you're starting to question the, the colonial or be aware of the colonial system. That's you reconnecting with your ancestors, reconnecting with your reality on a deeper layer. This is why Trump, the Trump card had to be played. He had to come out hard and be like, look, we're going to make America great again. What the fuck does that even mean? When he says that, he's saying, great means the forefathers. You know what he means. He'll never say it, but you know what he means. He's talking about the forefathers, slave owners. He's talking about the industrial age and bringing jobs back, which is paid slavery. He's talking about all this other shit that is sitting on the foundation of deception to begin with. Just like Bernie Sanders was talking about challenging the bankers when, yes, that's part of the story, but that's not the whole story. So when you realize that that's not the whole story and they're, they're selling you half truths and mistruths all to distract you from the bigger picture, then you realize that they're selling you a bag of distraction on purpose so you can just condition yourself on a deeper layer. Ain't no different than the occupied time frame when I was on the streets yelling at Bank of America and Wells Fargo talking about banks got bailed out and we got laid off and so on and so forth. That's not necessary. It's not not true. It's only true on a certain level of consciousness. And that level of consciousness is based upon limitation. And that mainstream alternative news and commercial revolution wants to keep you on that level of consciousness that's based upon limitation and if you look at cannabis from a particular perspective you can see that the vibration that you get in based upon your level of consciousness of who and what you are can also be seen as another form of limitation another form of sedation another form of censorship however you want to call it however you want to see it so all of these stories, the way they are being sold to the people is to maintain dominance, to maintain power, to maintain control, to keep you disconnected, to keep you externalizing your reality and separating yourself from nature and each other and the spirits and, and spirit and everything that is involved in your maximum potential. So they want to get you involved in the, the artificial new age. They want to get you involved in politics and aggressive progressives and fighting the revolution for Alex Jones and Bernie Sanders and all this other shit. They want to play your music for you. But people aren't having it anymore. People are breaking their conditioning and starting to play their own music, which is your ancestral music starting to play the ancestral heartstrings and realize, wait a second, 
you're not talking about this information. You're not talking about the indigenous people. You're not talking about you know, the connections that these people on this side of the earth plane had with this side of the earth plane. You're not talking about the, the, the foundation of NASA. You're not talking about the foundation of the university system. You're not talking about the foundation of the forefathers. You're not talking about all of this stuff that has added up to the military industrial complex and the prison industrial complex of today. That stuff's not being spoken on because it can't be spoken about. Because you will be, you will start to unravel the system itself, and they need you to be distracted and sedated in order to be controlled and manipulated to believe whatever it is that they need you to believe, and they'll sell it to you with your emotional strings. So they gotta tell you that you gotta go to war. They gotta tell you that you gotta vote for this person. They're gonna tell you that you should sign this petition. They're gonna tell you that you should. Go march down here and talk to this political official. They're going to tell you that they can do it for, so you can do everything that makes the, the individuals in the system itself more have power over you and will never allow you a moment of fucking peace to just reconnect with who and what you are at the base scale. Donald Trump is telling you, make America great again because he's talking about your conditioning, your mind control conditioning. That's greatness to them. But your inherent greatness, your human greatness, your, 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 your natural greatness exists in your ancestral connections, in the storylines outside of the, the manipulative storylines that were sold by your commercial religions, your commercial intellectual communities, and your commercial governments. Your corporate straw man mentality, enslaving of your soul, the spiritual warfare as a whole. So people are cutting those threads and, and reconnecting with something that's real, deeper roots. It hurts more. It takes more time to do. You're going to lose some friends. You're going to lose some relationships. You're going to lose a whole bunch of shit. But you gain something that isn't necessarily quantifiable in this materialistic realm. But it exists in who and what you are overall. The spirit of what, who and what you are overall. And that can never be taken away from you. Ever. Ever. And people who share that information, people who understand that information and live that life are a threat to this system. For you to think outside of the conditioning that these individuals are telling you to think like and act like, you are a threat to the system. This is why they're trying to push their weight around and say, look, either you're fake or you're real. And we're what's real. We go weak. We're, we're the ones wearing the cool shoes. We're the ones with the sweet Jan Sport backpack with the leather bottom. We're the ones with the nice haircuts. We're the ones on television. We're the ones in politics. We're the ones in your education, in your university system. We're the ones with big bank accounts. We're the ones with all the friends and all the parties. We're the ones in the movies. We're the ones making record deals. We're the ones with TV shows. We're the ones out here that all your friends look up to. We're the ones with big Facebook accounts. We're, with, we're the ones with the most followers on Instagram. We're the ones with all this stuff that, that makes you important. It's the new American dream. a mind control program censoring and sedating humanity so that's pretty much all I had to say with this video like I said if you want to see this stupid shit of this video <laughs> you can watch it on your own but it's the same thing like the Veritasium video and the limitations of that other stupid Alex Jones video talking about what was it? MTV being racist against white males. It's like they have to overcompensate so far. It's just ridiculous. It's it's ridiculous. So 
Thank you for joining me. And until next time, from all my relations, peace, love, and harmony.